Did you happen to see the, the story in the Times News this week that if uh, Idaho had a drop in its illegal alien population, we would lose a good chunk of the farm workers in this state? As if somehow uh, that's all the more reason to keep people here and keep them lined up at social services and dropping anchor babies and giving them the uh, the access to the WIC program and rental assistance and heating assistance because technically illegal aliens don't get that sort of thing. But once they drop a couple of anchor babies, and people out there will scream and yell about that, but I think that all of the charges of racism obviously didn't work last Tuesday, and so liberals are going to have to find another tack now and just admit that they're trying to recruit more Democrats to take even more from hardworking people in this country. But it was said that if, and this was the argument that's being made in all of this, it's being said. You probably saw it too. Some of you did anyway. It's being said that if if they were all to go home, and not all of them are going to go home, some of them will go home simply because they're going to be a little intimidated by the prospect someone will send them home. Number two, some of them will be sent home, and others probably will still fall through the cracks. But I read that, and I thought, well, I guess the farms, as long as those farmers are being subsidized, and I remember taking a boat trip down down the Snake River for the, the uh, what was it, Thousand Springs tour, and hearing that a lot of the great big mansions that are built along the river were built with, guess what, those subsidies that some of these people in the farming industry got. How much more do we need to give them? And when do we actually start calling it what it is, welfare? Well, but Bill, we're working hard and we're feeding people. Well, then, fine, but I work hard too. And I feed people mentally every day. And the government isn't giving me a check for doing that. And you're being a little disingenuous. You're also being two-faced if you keep making that argument. So I happened to see that, and and it, it caught my attention. But I wanted to share a couple of things with you very quickly about all of this. From the Daily Caller today, a leaked internal memo from Barack Obama's 2008 campaign, says that fencing at the U.S.-Mexico border could kelp, that's something that comes from the sea, it could help cut down on illegal immigration. Did anybody else happen to hear that? Uh, This is news to me. So long ago they recognized that in the Obama White House, but then ignored it because ignoring it meant bringing more potential Democrats here. The memo, which was made public by WikiLeaks, is dated September 7, 2008, even before the election, and contains a list of immigration promises and proposals. And uh, so there you have it. I wanted to share that with you this morning. And then this yesterday, President Obama had a news conference, maybe his last. There's a great photograph of the president checking his watch while he's actually at the news conference just to see how much time he's got left, likely his very last news conference before he departs the White House. But a reporter from Bloomberg, which if if you'd like to understand just how the collusion between uh, mainstream media and Democrats works in this country, listen to this reporter ask this question about how Obama can go ahead and break the law in order to protect all of those anchor babies and their families. I'm wondering if there's anything you can do to either reassure them or shield that information from from, uh, the incoming Trump administration. I'm going to start over again because you may not hear that question perfectly, and if you've got some hearing difficulties, he's asking, is there any way that you could help hide or shield these people from the incoming Trump administration? I'm wondering if there's anything you can do to either reassure them or shield that information from from, uh, the incoming Trump administration, considering his, his stance on immigration. And the second is, the administration and you have long maintained that legal restraints put on you by Congress governing um, the movement of detainees from Gitmo are on, an unconstitutional infringement on your rights as commander in chief. Uh, considering the, the gradual transfers that you've pursued are unlikely to continue under the Trump administration, is this now the time to sort of test that theory by moving the, the, the detainees and seeing what the chips want? Those are both excellent questions. Um, on the deferred action program that we have, known as DACA, that relates to DREAMers who are currently benefiting from uh, these provisions, uh, I will urge uh, the president-elect and the incoming administration to uh, think long and hard before 
they are um, endangering the status of what, for all practical purposes, are American kids. Who I can give more of your tax money and uh, then tell them, remember, that came from the Democrats. <laughs> remember who to vote for next time, and I'll give you more free lunch at somebody else's expense. This is called thievery. If someone came into your kitchen and started going through your refrigerator and then they suddenly delivered a baby on your kitchen floor, that doesn't mean they get to stay and eat your food for perpetuity, does it? And don't, don't any of these people who are coming here, well, I guess they broke the law to come here in the first place, so they obviously don't have any what you'd call morals to begin with. And we want these people here? Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com, 12 minutes after 8 o'clock. And we have a telephone caller with us. Caller, you're up next on the air. And just to pass along, telephone number this morning, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. And you're on KLIX. Go ahead. Hello? All Hello, right. Bill. How are you doing this morning? Well, good. I, I wondered if I was talking to Marcel Marcel. <laughs> hey, Bill. Uh, after hearing all this stuff about the immigration and stuff, I had a, and reading a couple of stories this morning, one about the uh, the, the statement Mexico came, to, came out with and said they're not sure how they can take back all these uh, immigrants. If they were deported, they couldn't support them very well. It would ruin their economy. Plus, uh, the stories of the uh, some of these mayors in the sanctuary cities uh, vowing to uh, maintain their status as sanctuary cities. I kind of came up with this possibly a win-win uh, uh, solution to all this. How about uh, when we deport or if we have anybody who feels unsafe that's here in an undocumented fashion, that we somehow provide transportation. I'd even be willing to cough up a few tax dollars for some rented buses and take those people to the sanctuary cities and uh, you know, kind of drop them off at the city hall steps and I'm sure the mayor's got jobs and housing for all these people, and you know, it'd kind of be win-win. They get what they'd want, we get what we want. I thought could work. Well, you know, it is possible. It, and first, can I add to this though? We aren't responsible for their economy. The fact of the matter is, if they had a competent government, which they've never had, they could take care of these people. And if it happened to be the other way around, would they be taking people from this country because we? Let's just say we rounded up all of our homeless or all of our dope dealers and said, well, we can't care for these people. We're going to send them south of the border. How do you think the reaction would be there? Now, the caller with us, you're up next, and you're on Top Story on KLIX. Go ahead. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, I work on a farming situation, and uh, I've kind of heard through the grapevine that some of them are worried, and I keep saying, if you're here legally and you have a green card, you have nothing to worry about you are here illegally, then I would pack your bags. Um, and as far as the jobs not being able to be filled, if we would stop cuddling our kids and giving them cell phones at age five and, and, and teaching them that they don't have to work and that they're going to import these people to do their jobs, maybe people would work and stop giving them welfare. You know, Hannity gives out welfare numbers every day. Sure. But no one ever no one ever says that they're starving because they're not. They're not starving. They're getting paid. And well, and you, you know, this is this is where it happens. In the olden days, if you got hungry, you worked. Well, what, what, thank you for the call. Pete Nilsson, who's an outgoing state legislator uh, from up in the Mountain Home area, made a comment. Uh, I was at a speech he was giving and he was pointing out how he has actually had to hire a lot of migrant workers on his on his farm because he said simply he can't find he can find let me put it this way he can find people to work but he said in the summer when he needs the most he hires high school students and he said they show up for two days and then on day three they don't show up and he'll go to their homes and they can't even come to the door they'll send mom to the door and he said mom will say oh he's too tired to do it today well there is some truth to that if I get a chance, I'll talk a little bit more about that. And you should take a look at my latest post at our website, newsradio1310.com, which is in a tangential way related to that. Next caller, you're on W, or excuse me, KLIX. Sometimes I forget which part of the country I'm in. Go ahead. Well, we're glad you're in this part of the country now. Thank you. But, hey, I, 
I've got a big problem with illegal immigration on the side of the employers. The employers don't have to pay uh, workman's comp on them. They're not paying everything. They're not paying all the taxes. I mean, it's, it's illegal because these guys are getting away with not doing everything that a normal business would do. I mean, if a normal brick-and-mortar business were to have hired a bunch of illegals, you know, these people would be screaming up and down because they're not, they're making too much of a profit and they're enslaving these illegal aliens. Right. And it really is. It's a, it's a legalized form of slavery. Well, it's just like Wall Street. Wall Street loves it, and, and the Wall Street Journal editorializes for it because, because it knows its I mean, readers, its subscribers, that they look at this and, and just, uh, frankly, they're salivating with greed at the prospect of that cheap labor. Well, the Democrat Party screams about how the, you know evil Republicans are trying to enslave everybody, but really it's the Democrats that have enslaved these people. They have them thinking there's no other way that they can come to the United States and make it other than illegally. And then they have to depend on the Democrat Party. You tell me how that is not a form of slavery. That is slavery legalized by the Democrat Party. Now, who is the party of racism? Who is the party of slavery? Who is that? Well, we know that from history that the Democrats are the party of slavery. They just found a new way to do it with illegal immigration. Oh, well said. I thank you much for the telephone call, 736-0300, to reach our program today. Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Also wanted to point out Steve Millington will join us in a few minutes. He's the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. We also expect to be joined by Grant Loeb's uh, county prosecutor coming up just after 9 o'clock news. We've got about one minute before the next break. You're up next. You're on the air. Good morning, Bill. I'm still smiling. Uh, it's a great day to be an American. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, has that obnoxious guy called in since the end of the election? Uh, the guy that doesn't speak English very well, I haven't heard. Uh, he did once and uh, and, you know, as usual, shot off his mouth and called everybody racists and bigots, and then I think that's been the end of him. He may well have already gone back to the uh, <clears throat> other <Hey>. side. <laughs> we can only hope so, Bill. Thanks for everything you do. <laughs> Thank you. Coming up on uh, 20 minutes after 8 o'clock, and I just wanted to point out, perhaps our lost, uh, last, yeah, lost day, I've had a few of those, uh, our last day before we actually see a bit of a, a change in the weather. We're going to have about two days of winter weather, and then things will improve again over the weekend, looking at some uh, some fairer temperatures over the weekend. But it won't be where it has been the last couple of weeks. Uh, just a quick note on that. Now, there was some snow in the forecast originally from Thursday. The last forecast I happen to see uh, said otherwise, that it'll just be cloudy Thursday and then start to gradually warm up again through the weekend as we head into a big week for a lot of people next week. Uh, just want to quickly mention, right now it's 37 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I was just sharing off the air. We have a photographer in here today. This is a follow up uh, yesterday to the reporter who was in studio from the Washington Post, and he's doing a story here in town. And so the photographer is doing the follow up work today. And we were talking about how many of us in media have moved all over the country. That's called downsizing. And if you're at this long enough, you're going to find out exactly what that's all about. I mentioned hearing earlier in the uh, the show, uh, people who have hearing difficulties, uh, which is an excellent opportunity for me to mention my friend, Dr. Christine Pickup at Mont Harrison Audiology in Rupert. And she's reminding you, Thanksgiving next week, you may have a lot of people in the house. That was the way it always was when I was growing up. But you may feel somewhat isolated if you can't hear all the conversations that are going on and you don't want to feel left out. So you need to call Mont Harrison Audiology to find solutions to hearing loss and be ready to enjoy all the fun of gatherings and special moments with loved ones, you can schedule that hearing check by calling 312-0957. Remember, life is worth hearing. That number once more, 312-0957. We have another telephone caller with us. It's I'm going to call it 824-38 at News Radio 1310, KLIX and newsradio1310.com. Caller, you're on the air. You're up next. Good morning, Bill. Excellent show, as always. Thank you. Listen, a couple points. I, I hope to God Trump sticks to his word and, and, and does away with these damn uh, executive orders. And, uh, you know, I'm all for legal immigration who want to come to this country, work, and become part of American society. But at the same time, let's not be ignorant and fool ourselves 
to believe that this problem with immigration is just a Democratic issue. They bring them in for the votes, and Republican, i.e. these uh, dairy owners here in Idaho, love this uh, immigrant workers. And, you know, it, it goes both ways. I remember growing up when I was a kid, summer vacations, I got off my rear end. I went to go work in construction, landscape, and whatever. Nowadays, as a society, we look down as having dirt under our fingernails and having to wake up at the crack of dawn and put in a hard day's work. As Americans, if we don't do something about it and stand up and, re and require our politicians to fulfill their campaign promises, what the hell are we complaining about? I think it's a uh, thank you for the call. Uh, he, the reference to Donald Trump. A lot of people, and I think I was one of them who was bringing it up on the air, that he could end up being, for a lot of people who were strongly in his corner, a major disappointment. And I heard this morning the possibility that John Bolton may end up with a cabinet position, and and I just got a chill up my spine because I realize that the Fox News aficionados out there who really spend a lot of time with that network may think the world of Bolton. I don't. I think that a lot of people voted for Trump because they're sick and tired of nation building around the world, and we need to figure out ways to take care of our own country first. If you put Bolton in there, uh, danger, 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 to quote Steve Irwin, the, the late Steve Irwin. And uh, Michael Savage has a column at Wall, uh, World Net Daily. I happen to see it uh, coming into work this morning. And uh, he's saying some of the same things that are we going to get. And then yesterday during his news conference, the president's comments about Trump when he called him a pragmatist. Uh, and he said he doesn't really have any ideology. Well, yes and no. First of all, pragmatist, I believe, is probably true. He's a deal maker. That was well known. Ideology, when he said he had no ideology, yes, he does. It's just it's a mix of ideologies. And I, I do hope, I do hope that we can figure out quickly what he's going to be up to because I think a lot of people out there who voted for him could end up highly disappointed. Right now, he has an ability uh, like Ronald Reagan had, to go in and talk over the heads of uh, media in this country and other people in politics and go directly to the American people. If he throws that away even before January 21st, oh, criminy, this country's going to be in some trouble. 27 minutes after 8 o'clock, you're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh oh, another one of those. Uh, you know what? I guess some people uh, have to cut out or they're driving down the street. And maybe the police officer sees them on the phone. Oh, i got to turn that off as fast as I can. You're on the air. You're up next. Well, I think a lot of us, the people I'm talking to, they would like to have been a fly on the wall listening to uh, Trump and Obama. And I guess there was supposed to be a photo op, but I have a feeling that Trump uh, basically told Obama how, to, uh, how the cow ate the cabbage. And so um, the photo op all of a sudden got this... Uh, Way late, I guess. And uh, but you're right. The uh, there's a lot of expectations, and uh, but I think uh, we can. We'll just have to wait and see. But we need to keep all of our politicians. They take an oath to uphold the U.S. Constitution, and they've been violating that in the Article Four, Section Four, as far as the invasion of the Muslims into this country. It's an invasion, and other sections that uh, have to do with what the federal government should be involved in. But one of the things we, we need to be definitely getting out of, we're, a lot of our causes, is getting out of the cotton-picking communist, uh, socialist, totalitarian United Nations, because there's where the Common Core comes, the refugee program, gun control, education stuff. I mean, it's just top-down, Agenda 21, and so... Hopefully, you know, we can get some relief from these regulations and so forth, put this country back to work with just doing away with all these executive orders. So I think we just need to keep their feet to the fire and not a lot of people, they go out for two years and they uh, every two years or so and get involved in political process. We need to be constantly involved or otherwise the liberals will win again. Hey, thank you much for the call. Right, maybe there's a radical solution for the United Nations. Nigel Farage is Secretary General. That would, that, I think a lot of people out there are cringing when they hear that. Uh, but he knows how to, uh, knows how to sort of 
remove all of those people uh, who, who are interfering, I guess, uh, with uh, sovereignty. Just thought I'd throw that one in there. Somewhere I've got a couple of sound bites from him, too, still from the weekend we didn't get to yesterday. Steve Millington joining us in just a couple of minutes on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. It's 37.